Hello and welcome to today's class on SAS for Analytics. As part of the course, we are going to cover SAS in detail. Um, so we're going to cover topics including how to actually get your data into SAS, some basic concepts in SAS, the idea of data sets, the idea of procedures. Um, we're going to take a look at how data is manipulated in SAS using functions and procedures. We're going to take a look at how data sets can be combined in SAS. We are going to use some programming techniques in SAS for advanced data manipulation. And of course, we are going to focus on the actual uh, methods that are used for uh, running analytic models. Uh, but in today's class, we are going to essentially look at a couple of things. One is just an understanding of what SAS is very generally and how it is set up. Two, how do you navigate through SAS? So essentially, where do you start? What are the windows that you need to take a look at in SAS? Uh, you know, what are the basic navigation components that you need for using SAS? And three, how do you actually import data into SAS? So at the end of this session, you will have an idea of how SAS is set up. You will have a feel for how SAS is used. And you will have an understanding of how data is actually imported into SAS. Of course, the first step for any analysis is to get your data into the, the software or the tool that you're going to be using for the analysis. Um, there are multiple ways of importing data into SAS, and we'll take a look at most of them. So SAS was actually originally developed in the 1970s, so you can see it's been around for a long time. And one of the main reasons for SAS's popularity has been the fact that it's always been able to uh, very robustly analyze large volumes of data. Um, there are multiple competitors to SAS. After SAS was developed in the 80s and the 90s, there were other statistical software applications developed. A lot of them are more user friendly, they're more GUI based, uh, you know, less programming required and so on. But none of them have been able to really manage volumes of data as efficiently as SAS, SAS has. And SAS, that's been a big reason for SAS's popularity. Of course, by now, there's a lot of institutional code written in SAS, and therefore it still enjoys an advantage in the analytics industry. Um, the, when we say SAS, there's actually multiple components of SAS. When people refer to SAS, they're really talking about base SAS usually, but as an application, it's really a suite of applications. Base SAS is what we are going to focus on. Um, base SAS is the, the workhorse of SAS, really, the basic component of SAS. And 70 to 80 percent of all basic analytics can get done using Base SAS. So it offers data manipulation, data visualization. It offers all the statistical techniques that we will need, you know, regression, clustering, and so on. So typically for basic analytics, you will use Base SAS quite a bit. But of course, SAS also offers components that are much more specialized. So for example, if your, if your reports or your output is very graph heavy, you may want to invest in a component of SAS called SAS Graph. Um, Base SAS also generates charts and plots, but they're not as fancy as, for example, what you would get out of something like SAS Graph. There are you know, multiple components like this. Um, there are enterprise level GUI based SAS components, for example, enterprise minor which allows you to run models at the, at the click of a button. And people using Enterprise Minor don't need any knowledge of SAS coding. It's very much uh, GUI based. There is SAS IML, for example, which is Interactive Matrix Language. If you want, if you are a hardcore statistician, then you may want to solve problems essentially uh, setting up the matrices um, appropriately. So SAS allows you to do that. SAS also offers very solution specific products. For example, if you're in the in the pharmaceutical industry and you're looking to track your sales force optimization, right, of your medical reps, SAS offers a solution that is tailored for that sales force optimization within the pharmaceutical industry or credit scoring solutions within the financial services industry. So SAS has developed very, very specialized solutions depending on what your exact needs are. SAS now, for example, offers solutions that are tailored for web analytics. So if you go to Wikipedia, that link below, and you take a look at the components of SAS, you can see a big list. Um, or if you go to the SAS site, you can see a big list. But uh, we are going to focus in our class, in this module, on base SAS. The uh, current version of base SAS that's being used is 9.1.3. SAS can be installed on multiple operating systems, including Windows, Unix, uh, Linux, the Macintosh, and so on. We are going to be focusing on SAS installed on Windows. 
Now there are GUI options. So SAS has some, even base SAS has some GUI uh, abilities that are offered, but only on some operating systems. So for example, you can import data into SAS using a GUI option that's available to you on the Windows system, but not on the Unix system. So let's take a look at what SAS is like and you know, get an idea of the look and feel of SAS and the structure of SAS. So um, SAS is also set up on the idea of Windows, right? So there are different windows to do different sets of things. Um, we'll take a look at each window and we'll, we'll look at what you do in you know each window or what kind of output is produced in each window. We're going to spend some time just covering the basics as part of this presentation and then and then we're actually going to open up SAS and we're going to take a look at how that's set up, right? So uh, this, uh, this session will be fairly interactive. But for now, I want to make sure you are comfortable with the general uh, idea of SAS and how it's set up um, and some of the key concepts before we get into seeing how this actually works. So there are five main windows via Windows SAS. The first is the program editor. So the editor window is essentially used for writing your SAS codes. Right. So this is where your SAS programs are written, your commands are submitted. You may want to edit some of your commands because you made errors or you want to change the way you're writing something. So the program editor is essentially used for writing, editing, and submitting SAS commands and programs. The next window that we will look at is the log window. So typically when you write a SAS code or a set of code, you will submit that and SAS will tell you if the code successfully ran. Right, SAS will tell you if your code was successfully executed. So the status of SAS command submitted is in the log window. This is not the output window. This is not where your output is generated. This is essentially a window that tells you, you know, you submitted these lines of code. Um, this is how much time it took to process. Was it successfully processed? What was the output? You know, how many how many observations have you now in your data set? You know, how many data sets did you create? So it will tell, it will describe the output for you. But this, remember, this is not the actual output. This is simply a status of SAS command submitted. The output actually shows up in a window called output window or a list window. Okay, um, also called a list window. So not all SAS commands have a default output. So if you think about it, let's say you wanted to sort your data. Okay, uh, sorting per se doesn't have an output. You can look at the data, but it is not necessarily printed. But there are commands like print, for example. So if you say print, then SAS will print your data set for you. And that obviously has an output, and that output will show up in the list window or the output window. There are two other windows that allow you to do some tracking. right? So as part of any SAS program, typically, you will generate multiple results. You may print some data. You may subset the data and print it. You may run a regression model, or you may run 10 regression models. You may do some frequency distributions. So as part of one session, you may have multiple results. So there is a results window that allows you to look at particular results. So let's say you had five or ten different things that you did in the SAS session, but now you want to go back to your original printed result, right, which you submitted uh, at the beginning of the session. So you can just scroll through the results window and click on the output that you specifically want. Right? And then there is an explorer window that essentially as part of a SAS session, we will see this later in the class, you, you create multiple SAS data sets. Okay? Uh, so the Explorer window is sort of like Windows Explorer on a Windows system. It allows you to list all the SAS data sets that you created as part of a SAS session. It allows you to view them. It allows you to manage them. So let's just take a look at what these actually look like. So this is an editor window. Now you'll notice the editor window essentially is a text editor. It allows the analyst to type in SAS commands or sets of programs. So you, when you open SAS up, you will typically come to the editor window and you start typing in your code in the editor window. Okay, so it's a text editor. Um, you can start typing in anywhere. There is uh, no column restriction in that sense. I can start from column 10. I can start from row 15. It's totally up to me. Uh, you can see that the editor is user friendly in terms of there is color coding of keywords that is available. So if you take a look at this SAS code here, you can see library name, data, set, proc means they're all in blue. right? Um, some of them in dark blue, some of them in light blue. All SAS keywords typically will show up in blue. Actual keywords will show up in dark blue. Options to the keywords will show up in light blue. Right? Um, you can see anything that I put within quotes will show up in purple. Right? Sometimes you see there's red. Okay, If you make syntax errors or if there are words that you use that SAS doesn't recognize, then they show up in red. So typically, if you see red, it means that you made a mistake. In this example, I wanted to say VAR, VAR. 
instead I typed in VIR and so SAS is pointing out to me that it doesn't recognize what this is. So you can see that the editor is fairly user friendly. Uh, after version 6 this color coding has been available so when you're typing in code it's very very quickly you can see if you've been making any syntax errors. Another very fundamental thing about SAS is that you can submit all the commands in the editor window at one time or you can submit only parts of the program at one time. So if I have code like this, I can submit the entire thing. When I say submit, I mean I, I can run the entire thing or I can run pieces of code, right? Uh, of course, there are rules about which pieces of code that you can submit. But the idea is that every time you want to run a SAS code, you don't have to necessarily run the entire code. Usually SAS programs may consist of multiple pages of code. Um, and especially when you're doing investigative analysis or you're doing you're, you're sort of creating your model, you may not want to start from step one every single time. So SAS allows you to submit pieces of code. Another thing to notice this run man icon here, that is the run button. So typically if you want to submit code, you either just go to the editor window and you hit the run button. By default, all the lines of code in the editor window get submitted or you highlight pieces of code that you want to submit. Right? You just highlight them and then hit the run button, in which case only the highlighted code will get run and not the entire code. Now, all these commands that are grouped into a program, typically one SAS program will consist of multiple commands, sequentially multiple commands. They can be saved as a program. No? So you just go to file and you say save as and SAS will ask you for a name and you save it as a program. So SAS programs will have a dot .sas extension. So if you see something like program1.sas or sample creation.sas or regression.sas, customer.sas. These are essentially SAS programs that someone's created and saved. Another advantage to SAS is that you can create multiple or you can have multiple editor windows open at the same time. So if you have this editor window and I'm writing some code here, I can go to file new editor and open up another editor window and write a separate program there. So SAS allows me to have multiple editor windows at the same time. I can have multiple programs in those multiple editor windows and I can submit multiple programs at the same time. However, this is not something I would recommend for initial users of SAS. Things can get very confusing and as we will see, the editor windows can be multiple but the log window is the same and the data set views are the same. So unless you are very familiar with SAS and you sort of able to multitask, it's probably not a good idea to begin by having multiple programs open at the same time. Here's an example of a log window. Remember I told you the log window is essentially where the status of SAS command submitted is visible. You can see that the log window is also color coded. You can see some red, some blue, some green. Lots of times what people will do is they will take a look at the log window and they will essentially just look for color. If you see red and green, it means that SAS has given you a warning or an error. Green is a warning and red is an error. The difference between a warning and an error is that if there is a warning, SAS will not stop processing. It will list a warning, but it will continue processing. If there is an error, then SAS will stop processing at that point. Right? So lots of times what people use the log is to look at, you know, do I have any green lines or red lines in my code? If I don't, then my code has run correctly. That's also wrong because there are two types of errors that you can make with any programming code. Does anyone know what they are? Two types of errors that you can make? The most common error is obviously syntax errors, right? So any code, any programming language has a specific syntax that you have to follow. For example, every command in SAS has to end with a semicolon, right? So that's just syntax. You have to use SAS keywords in a specific way. You have to specify certain options. So that's syntax. So typically if you, if you mess up on the syntax, SAS will stop processing. It will say that I couldn't find something. So for example, you can see I did something like proc g plot data equals to get data plot minutes used one and uh, it said error expecting a star syntax error statement will be ignored right at least one plot bubble statement must be given so sas is telling you that there is some problem here i am not going to run this so sas is telling you very clearly now syntax errors are easy to find and easy to fix usually it's very easy you run the program you realize that you made some syntax errors you go back and fix it there's another kind of error which is not related to syntax does anyone know what that is? Those are called logical errors. Logical errors happen when you're trying to achieve A, but you end up doing something else, right? You want to pick the value with the largest 
income for example but you don't do that in your data set you end up picking up non large incomes you know not the highest income you want to sort your data in a certain way but you sort it in an opposite way now logical errors are harder to find in the sense that since you're not making a syntax error sas is going to process it and sas won't be able to tell you that look you were trying to do a but you've ended up with b and that's where the log helps you know going through the log will give you a lot of information into whether you were able to achieve what you started off by saying you wanted to achieve it's a very good idea for you to take a look at the log and to review the log in detail especially when you have large programs and you're doing a lot of complicated analysis logs can also be saved so if you go to file save yeah sas will allow you to save the log as a log file dot log file and sometimes people will save logs especially if they've run a long complicated program and they want to make sure that they remember what the output was like so it's a record of activity in a sas session right it records every activity that you do in a sas session display status of sas command submitted successful completion or stop due to errors user friendly color coding of errors or warnings displays information on data process it tells you how many records were sorted how much time it took and so on and we'll come to each of these and like we just discussed log files can be saved with a dot log extension here's an example of an output window and the results window so this is the output window here and this is the results window remember we we talked about the fact that the log is only showing you a status and it's not the exact output the output is actually stored in the output window so for example i have run something called a means procedure on my sas data set which essentially generates some summary statistics of numeric variables in my data set so that by default has an output so i have all these variables in my data set and now i can see what is the number of observations what is the average for each variable what is the standard deviation what is the minimum what is the maximum right and you can see that this is being generated in the output window now the default for output typically tends to be text but html output is also possible you can set sas up so that it generates html option output for you uh, this is html output text output tends to be much less formatted much less easy to move to uh, an external source so if i move this html output to excel it will show up nicely formatted and i can pretty much use it but if this was in text for example then it would be very difficult to move to excel it's a good idea for you to set your default output to to html if you're using windows sas this is the results window remember we said that as part of one sas session you may have multiple results so this will give you a list of results and uh, if you want to go back to a particular result you just go here and you just double click on that particular result and it you, you can bring that up Finally this is the explorer window I'm not going to spend too much time on this right now because we have to cover some other concepts before we understand the idea of data sets and libraries and so on but just remember that the explorer window is essentially where you can keep track of all the data sets that you create within one sas session we will come back to this when we cover some other concepts